there's a, an understanding and a clarity. Also, at the same time, there's a total satisfaction in not knowing and just trusting and having faith where you yeah. have that when you're part, you know, with God. Let's, let's talk about what it means to walk in love. Right. Love assumes the best. So mm -hmm. if there's two ways someone's statement can be taken and you choose to take it the wrong way, when you could have taken it in a good way, you're walking in hatred. You're walking in the spirit of Antichrist and the spirit of Satan, the accuser of the brethren. That's his full-time job is accusing people. Mm -hmm. okay? So if someone, and I've seen this over and over again, a minister makes a statement that you can take one of two ways, right? The people, I want you to be careful. I know this is pretty far into recording, but if you're still listening, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> if it's pretty, you know, but if you see someone who says they're a Christian, because someone makes a statement and you can look at that statement charitably in the, in the eyes of love and go, maybe they meant this, you know, let me look at the rest of their ministry and look at the last 30 years of what they believe. Let me just hear the, the whole sermon. Right. But you, if you are content with a 10 second YouTube clip and you're going to damn someone to hell over a 10 second YouTube clip, the day of judgment is gonna be a terrifying day for you. A terrifying day, because it says that to those who have shown no mercy, judgment without mercy will be shown. To those who show no mercy, judgment without mercy will be shown. The measure you use be measured back to you. So you have to think about, if you made a statement that could be taken one of two ways, how would you want someone to interpret that? Wouldn't you want them to give you the benefit of the doubt? That is basic Christianity, what it means to walk in love. If I ever hear someone say, I'll give Joyce Myers a good example. I know that 33 years ago, she preached a sermon once where she talked about how Jesus fought the devil in hell or something like that or whatever, you know what I mean? And it was some stupid comment she made as a newer believer, whatever, right in the ministry. And she's never said it a second time again. Like, it's not on her statement of faith. It's not something she currently teaches, something she practices. It's not part of her doctrine. It's not part of her life. It's a stupid comment she made however many years ago, right? 30 years of a person's ministry, you're going to invalidate because of a stupid comment 30 years ago. How would you pass that test? How would you pass that test if you had that much of your thoughts recorded out into the world and you had thoughts recorded for 10, 20, 30 years, and you screwed up at some point. If you use that metric, do you know who we'd have to, what we'd have to do? We'd have to tear the apostle Peter out of the Bible. Because one time he was called Satan by Jesus because he said, no one's gonna crucify you, Lord. Lord. And Jesus is like, get behind me, Satan. So we got some false doctrine there. Then we had Peter, um, leading the entire church into hypocrisy and false doctrine because he was being a hypocrite and eating with the Jews like separately than the Gentiles, but eating with the Gentiles separately than the Jews. And Paul lit him up like a Christmas tree, you know? What are you doing, man? That's, you're, you're, you're bringing people under bondage. You need to repent. Peter repented. That was the end of the story. He moved on. I mean, what is this standard that any genuine minister of God can never say anything stupid ever they have to be 100% right. Like they have to be like the Apostle Paul or Jesus incarnate that the, they never can say anything stupid at any point in their entire ministry. Who can survive that? No one can survive that. It's impossible. It's ungodly. It's, it's, it's like basically the devil's clapping every time he sees this kind of stupidity. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I just want to really warn you guys especially new believers if you're seeing a five or ten second youtube clip i promise you satan made that clip because god isn't about a five or cent, ten second clip it's about the whole sermon at the very least if you're not going to look at 20 years of their ministry at least watch the whole sermon and make sure you understand the context make sure you're looking at them through the eyes of love and charity and if at the end of all that they genuinely made a mistake then take it for what it's worth. You know what? Brother so-and-so said this, and I think they misspoke. Here's another option you can do. Go to their website, look at their statement of faith. What did they choose to put on record? Not, not an ad lib while you're preaching 
and you might have made an off comment. I mean, what did they say? This is what I actually believe written down. I put thought into it. Here's my statement of faith. What do they actually believe? You can also call the ministry or, e or e email the ministry and ask them questions. It's very easy to do that nowadays, and they have people that will respond. If you have questions about, for example, I use the Joyce Meyer thing. My friend David had questions about it. I suggested, why don't you just reach out to them? He reached out to them, emailed the ministry. Hey, listen, I heard this. Da, 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 da. What do you think? You know, what do you guys believe? And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, Joyce did say that 30 years ago. That's not what we believe. That's not how we stand. Here's a copy of her statement of faith. You know, she's not, just she hasn't taught that in 25 years or whatever. Um, and I'm just using her as an example because it was her name was mentioned, right? That's how you walk in genuine love. What if you were the person being accused? That's all I'm saying. If you were being accused, how much diligence and care would you want the person accusing you to take to make sure they got you correct? You know? I love that we're kind of talking on this because I feel like it's, it's, it's a good way as we're coming to an end to show that we're actually giving both sides of the argument here. Mm -hmm. Really. Um, we're, we're, we're showing that there needs to be this balance. Right. Because it's, we're talking on one hand when you're speaking, making mistakes, just like someone in Young and Faith is going to do. When they mm -hmm. go out and they're making all kinds of mistakes, sanctification process, teaching, realizing that they taught something wrong, and then they had to go back and, and then, you know, it's, and here's the thing, like, those aren't usually the ones that are accusing. They usually have questions like, is it okay? Am I saved? It, it, oh, I have a woman pastor. Does that mean I'm saved? Is it okay? Can I go to this church? You know, like they just have questions and fear. It's more along the people that have gone a long time uh, that start pulling in uh, the, start pulling the strings where it causes division because they start saying, oh, this is, you know, this isn't of God. Um, this person's not of God, this person's a false, this person's false, this person's a heretic, heretic, heretic. And they start uh, causing all these divisions, you know, using their biblical truth. Uh, and then they take their, their personal experience. And again, it's usually a personal conviction uh, that's coming with the accusation. Uh, or they usually speak from an inexperience because they'll say, you know, I've never experienced this or something yes. like that, or this is not something. So they speak from an inexperience. Yes. Uh, but a lot of that, uh, again, you know, it's showing a balance between we need to be forgiving. Uh, and here's the thing. We, I said it, you know, we see, you know, love thinks no evil. So even as we talk about these people, we're saying, you know, young believers doing this. We're saying we, we understand good intentions, good mm -hmm. intentions, you know, <laughs> like bad, bad fruit, you know. But it's just like we're trying to it's it's we're trying to work it out and sharpen iron together. And there needs to be this balance. There needs to be time periods to be poured into. You can't just come out, you know, being a teacher, you have to be a student. Think about it. The, the whole kingdom is upside down. You're a servant. Yes. You're a servant. The king was a servant. You know, like just take the time to grasp. You got some learning to do, you know, and take some time to realize. Um, but at the same time, be forgiving and be loving and, and, and try to see pure in your brethren, even when you know they're in the wrong. Try to, yeah, try to help. Love them understand. through it. Amen. And especially when they're genuinely in the wrong. Right? Yeah, love them through it. Especially, I mean, I want you to assume this. Let's say there's a particular minister and you heard them say something that, like there's one popular minister, love people like, but he said something so absurdly stupid. He said that a Christian, because they're securing Christ, they could take the mark of the beast and still be saved, right? He literally said that. And I'm like, oh, dude. <laughs> like, you are so wrong. I can't begin to explain how wrong you are. But guess what your heart should be? Broken. God, please reveal to him that's not how this works. Like, please help him not say stupid stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You should have a broken heart for someone who you see... They're trying to love Jesus, but they might be wrong about some things, you know? All you right. can't go on a witch hunt and start saying, okay, they've never said that, but I looked at their album cover sideways in the light, and I saw um, there was a triangle, and I think that can, I'm like, dude, what even are you thinking? That's not righteous judgment. That's nonsense. You know what I mean? By your words should be justified, by your words should be condemned, like in context. I want you guys to think about this and how powerful this is. When Jesus was on trial, they called him a secret council at night. And I believe it was Nicodemus said, does our law 
allow us to condemn a man without hearing him fully. Think about that. Jesus was taken out of context. Hey, he said he's going to rebuild this temple in three days. Heretic. You see? They took his words. They were his words, but they ripped them out of context. And then they wouldn't really have a proper hearing. It was this fly-by-night, witch hunt, crucify him, kill him kind of thing. If you see a bloodthirstiness in people where they're wrenching words out of context, they're willing to not have a hearing, they're willing to just be vicious, that's satanic. It's not, it's not God. It's not God. Yeah. You know? um, I think there's a lot of fear maybe still uh, with some people uh, visiting our page. There's some fear in their spirit that they mm -hmm. don't want to be deceived again. And I just wanted to ask you two guys if you could close maybe with a word to them about um, not resting in fear, because I That's think right. it's that fear that makes them say, okay, I was just deceived. Mm -hmm. I thought I was following God in the new mm -hmm. age, and it was a false God. Some of them were maybe following like Christ consciousness. Now I've been saved, but now I go online, like you said, and I see all these memes and, and posts and um, five second clips taken right. out of context. And, and I'm worried. I'm worried. I don't know where to go now as a Christian. I'm living in a remote uh, town in the middle of Australia, and I only have one Anglican church down the road, and uh, it's not, you know, very Bible-based or whatever. And so that's all they have are these YouTube pastor videos. And, and there's a spirit of fear, I think, infiltrating a little bit right now, um, where the fixation goes from, okay, salvation to now calling everybody out and, yes. and trying to find fault with, okay, but if now I go there, I'll be deceived again. And I don't, I don't want to be deceived. So maybe there's a word you, you two could close on. I'll let Javon <laughs> close. I'll say something. I'll let him have the last word on this. But I would say foundational pillars is memes are lies. They can't possibly, they cannot possibly um, address anything fully. Don't ever base what you think on a meme. You might have the name of 20 pastors in a list and a meme about them. It's inherently a deception because you don't know every one of those people. I've seen memes where they have the name of one solid pastor and 10 deceivers. And do you understand that it's not righteous judgment? So slow down. Don't base anything based on memes. Don't base anything based off fake, um, YouTube clips where it's just a, a minute or two of something. Um, don't base anything on how you feel about it. Base it on the word of God. And turn off YouTube. Turn off all that stuff. That's not how God's going to teach you. God's going to teach you through the scripture. And if you watch a video, look for love. Look for love. Look for love. If the person speaking does not strike you with the love of God, in Christ and encourage you towards loving Jesus and loving other people, that person's a deceiver in and of themselves. They are a deceiver, I'm telling you. If they're coming out with a battle ax and they're attacking everybody else, that's satanic, that's not of God. And like Jovan said, it doesn't matter if what they're saying is technically accurate, that spirit is satanic, you understand? So I just, it's very, I know it keeps it very simple, but just stay with the word and look for love. Look for the fruit of the spirit. And people will bring you back to the word with the love of Christ. You're okay. Don't, don't, it's not going to be a subconscious deception in the way this person wears their hair or a, an emblem on their shirt. Like that's, that's not where it's going to be. Jesus said, by their words, you're going to be justified. By your words, you're going to be condemned. Listen to what they're saying. Don't look at all this other stuff. Don't try to figure it out. Don't read into stuff. That's not right. Treat it like it was yourself. Listen to what they're actually saying in context and either it lines up with the word or it doesn't and don't get outside of that or you'll confuse yourself. Thank you. You know, I think it's important um, for you. <laughs> come here, come here. I think it's important, um, you know, that, that you're kind of, you know, pointing it this direction to end it on because I think that's exactly kind of right. There is a lot of people out there that operate in, in, in fear or that's why I even said like new believers get caught into a legalism because they are wanting to please God. They are absolutely wanting to please God. They want to do it the right way. They don't want to make mistakes. And so there's nothing wrong with that. And that's why it talks about working out your salvation in fear and trembling. But let's understand 
when, when it's talking about that, it's not talking about fear as in um, uh, fear. At, it's, it's talking about like a respect and awe. It's talking about when, when you operate in worry and anxiety, that's in the flesh. That's so, so when you're, when you're, let me say it like this, me and my local church, right? Cause they're talking about YouTube. They don't know who to watch. You're, you're watching so many memes or YouTube videos or whatever it is out there saying, this is good. This is bad. You know, you don't know who to trust. You don't want to be taken advantage of. Um, I don't even agree with my own pastor at my own church on everything. On my own right. local church. Okay. Right. I right. don't even agree. And it's, that's, that's the thing. You can have that discernment where you watch something and say, you know, oh, you know, that's why I said earlier, chew on the meat, spit out the bones. You right. know, maybe, you know, maybe something's not right. Or, and it's not saying you get to pick and choose, take it to the word. If you yes. have questions about it and you're not sure or you're hearing her say something that you're like, hmm, take it to the word. Then you're, then you're, then you're going to be feeding yourself, not just here and, and getting your iron sharpened through, through the you know, internet or whatever it is. You're going to be actually feeding your spirit by digging into and getting affirmation if what is true or does this fit with scripture? Does this fit with the nature of God? You know, is this, does this the pattern that I see of God's nature or is this what it says in scripture? Um, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't even agree with my own pastor. So think about that. And I'm okay with being at that church. I'm okay that, you know, me and him don't see eye to eye on everything. It's, it's not, I'm not going to sit there and cause division over it. That's I'm right. not going to cause division in the body because I don't, you know, me don't agree on certain things. Um, right. and, and big things, things that aren't touching like salvation. We're talking about things that are outside of like being born again and knowing Jesus. We're talking, like, let's say someone believes that you should be um, like have water poured over your head for baptism and someone else believes you should be immersed or someone believes that we're going to be raptured out of here any minute. Somebody else doesn't believe in the rapture at all which the church didn't for like hundreds of years, didn't believe in the rapture at all. And, you know, had a different view that the kingdom would come through the church on earth. And none of those things are heresies. None of those things are going to damn somebody to hell. You know, get educated. If someone says they believe something you've never heard, get educated. Look at that's a historical belief. Look at where they get that in scripture. And you can end up walking away going, you know, brother, I believe in full immersion baptism. I believe it in scripture, but I'm not going to, you know, it, it's a secondary issue. Okay. It's a secondary issue, and we're not going to divide and blow each other up over it. Yes. So I guess, I guess what we're just saying is, is don't operate in that fear. It's that the fear is safe because it means you're wanting to please God, so that's a good thing. But if you're operating in fear, you're not operating in the spirit. Mm -hmm. you're, you have to operate in faith. You have to walk by faith. And what that means to walk by faith in a scenario in this is you have to be you know, take some steps, go out, watch some videos, do what it is you need to do, trust something. Uh, and then talk to people you do trust and say, Hey, how do you feel about this person? Right. And, and get some opinions and stuff like that. And, and from, from trusted people, people that you see the fruit in their lives That's and, right. you see, and you see Christ in them and you can read them like your Bible. Cause maybe you don't have all the best biblical knowledge. Well then read who you see, you know, you can recognize Christ. The Holy Spirit in you, whether you're a baby Christian or not, is going to recognize himself in someone else. And you're like, boom, I see Christ in you. I see the fruit of the spirit. I see, you know, patience, love, kindness, self-control, mm -hmm. all of the attitudes, all of it. You know, it's just, you learn from them, ask him, Hey, I'm watching this. Is it okay? And then he can give you, here's some warnings bop, right. bop, bop, about this teacher. You know, I don't agree with this, this, and this, but you know what? They're really good at this. Here's the thing. On, now. Holstein, maybe he's not the best preacher, but he's a good motivational speaker. <laughs> but I'm <gonna> call, <laughs> maybe I'm not going to call him the, the best pastor in the world, but maybe. Not, that's a really good example, dude. Like he's not a pastor biblically. He's a He's motivational a, speaker. Exactly. He doesn't preach the cross, the blood of Jesus, repentance, faith in God, you know, hell, heaven. Like, he doesn't talk about this stuff. But if he's, a, if, like, if I'm, like, need motivation, like, just general motivation or something, and he was on the radio, I wouldn't, like, my eyes wouldn't melt or whatever. You know, I'd be like, yeah. I mean, okay, I'm probably not going to watch I mean, Joel Olstein. I probably won't watch him either. But my point <laughs> is, that, like, I wouldn't, I would never encourage someone to go listen to him. Right. I mean, that's someone that's... But your point is exactly right. He's a motivational speaker that happens to use Christian stuff to back up what he's saying. And like, he just that's what you gotta look, just, you know, 
operate, take, because he's going to say things that maybe don't line up with scripture and you're going to have to, you know, but that's okay. You, it's, there's a responsibility on you to seek that out and seek truth. You're not seeking happiness, you know, you're seeking truth. Yeah. All right. Well, we should probably end. It's been kind of a long video. Yep. A big one. Love you guys. And until next time. Leah, you want to end us in prayer? Yeah, Leah, you want to end us in prayer? Thank you, Jesus, for these two beautiful men of God. Thank you for bringing us all together. And this is for your glory, God. Thank you for the anointing you gave on this discussion. Thank you for leading us and reminding us to always be in love for each other. And I'm just praying for the people on this page that you continue to work on their hearts as they're just coming closer to you now, Jesus. Bless all of us in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Love you guys. We'll talk later. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.